Okay, we're recording. All right, welcome Jamie Harvey Wilms, the artist in residence for the month of February 2016 here at the Cedarburg Cultural Center. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> okay, what medium do you work in, Jamie? Uh, I, I'm clearly in front of me a mixed media. Um, I use a lot of clay, I use a lot of paint and uh, found objects, uh, things that I pull out of the garbage or find at thrift stores or, you know, you name it, it's fair game. Great. What is the focus of your current work? Uh, so I recently uh, graduated with my master's degree in sculpture. And as part of uh, building your thesis, not only the body of work that is the sculptures or whatever you, you, you just set up, show, uh, I had to write a thesis paper. And uh, I dug pretty deeply into uh, fairy tales. Uh, folk tales, biblical narratives that kind of informed my very Midwestern childhood. And uh, I started pulling them apart and looking at them as a, in a, in a really uh, informative part of my identity. Um, and so I, in pulling them apart, I started using objects from the domestic. So it, to, in summation, it was this amalgamation of fairy tale fantasy and domesticity and how those things kind of conflict as well as blend together and created this 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 person. Great. Yeah. So what is it about art that excites you? Uh, a whole lot of it. Uh, I love color. I love that paint is kind of just like this edible looking thing. Um, when I walk into a museum I get that feeling like you have a crush on somebody. Uh, and I think it's just, it's the textures, it's the form, it's the, the sensory experience that it can give you, especially sculpture, because we are 3D things. So it's easiest to understand a 3D object because it, it is of our world, whereas I think sometimes two-dimensioned can be a little bit alienating. Not a slam against painters, but it, it can be tough. <laughs> All right. What made you want to be an artist in the first place? Uh, you know, I think my mom always likes to tell the story that when I was in kindergarten and they asked what I wanted to be, and I said, Mrs. Claus, <laughs> which is completely unrealistic and not a real thing, and it should have maybe been a signifier, but uh, I guess I imagined her as this builder of trinkets, and so uh, for me, it was always about making things. It was always, you know, you go in our backyard, there were sticks that were you know, somehow tied together into some weird contraption. It was, it was all about play and imagination and, and uh, you know, I had a knack for making things too, so it kind of was a natural occurring thing. <laughs> Great. Um, so to get to where you are now, what kind of career preparation did you pursue? Uh, as I mentioned before, I just finished my master's degree at uh, the State University of New York in Albany. Uh, before that, I had uh, I received my uh, art history and painting degree from the University of South Dakota in Vermilion. Um, and then between those two, uh, I worked as an artist in residence in a hospital uh, in a cancer center. So we did in and out patient chemotherapy, radiation, as well as the children's hospital. We made art with family members, with patients. Uh, and, and all of those things kind of funneled me towards uh, where I landed in Albany, uh, and I and I loved it. You know, uh, I worked in I've worked in schools, I've worked in nursing homes now, um, and I'm here now. Uh, and then my husband got a job out here, which pulled us in the direction of the Midwest again. So there's been a lot of preparation, and then there's been like random opportunities along the way that have kind of informed the direction that's taken me to where we are today. Great. Um, and what have been some of your obstacles along the way? I think moving locations has been tough. Uh, Jerry Saltz, the art critic, always talks about how uh, we are an all-volunteer army. And that means artists, curators, art historians, um, critics, and, and you kind of get ingratiated into your community. And that's really what funnels uh, an artist's career. So shifting has been kind of tough because uh, every new location, you're meeting new people and you have to kind of start all over again. Um, 
Studio space is, is a hard to come by and afford uh, tools also. You know, I went from being in this educational background where uh, kilns and welders and other artists are constantly at your fingertips to uh, being isolated in my own studio with not a lot of tools and not a lot of resources. So I think, you know, this artist game is really tough because it's solitary and as well as inclusive all at the same time and, and they kind of war with each other and I think those are kind of big obstacles that not only I struggle with but a, a lot of other artists. Yeah. Um, how do you continue to challenge yourself as an artist? Uh, develop, moving, <laughs> that's, you know, it's a constant challenge, uh, but also, you know, really maintaining the relationships I have developed. Uh, you know, there's, social media has been a great tool, Instagram, I find artists and writers and all these really wonderful people that are making similar work as me, uh, and they kind of spur on this little competitive side, you know, you always want to make something that, uh, you know, is adding to... Uh, the language that's being developed already. Um, and then uh, stay in contact with my fellow artists. It's, uh, I think those combine to create kind of a challenge as well as me being innately a competitive person. Kind of <laughs> like, oh, I want to make things that are better than everyone else's. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, great, Jamie. Thanks for speaking with us. Awesome. Thank you.